This is the Holy Gospel according to the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. Now John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You, you may be seated. Try not to bump into anything back here, but... Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that I find fascinating about uh, a small town like this is how much names mean in this town. And how everyone seems to be so aware of what people's names are. Now, this isn't just unique to, to Canby. It is kind of, I think, a rural uh, community sort of thing. But I have noticed throughout the years that uh, when someone is trying to describe someone to me or tell me who someone is, they start going into names. Well, so-and-so is a Johnson, but they were born a Smith, and they married into this family, and this family is this name. And the names are very, very important. It's how we identify each other. It's how we kind of not just identify as, as hey, John, but identify who we are and where we come from, and in some cases, where we might be going, right? The names are important. Now, this was a little bit new for me. I mean, growing up in Alaska, that, that's not really the case, and I think that might be because there are very few people there, at least in my generation, who were like fifth, sixth generation there. I think the most that you got was a third generation, and at least with the kids I grew up with. And so we didn't have these big long roots in a community. Everyone was kind of new to the area, and so our names became less important. You know, I, I got your first names, but there wasn't a story behind your last name and about how these two families came together. And it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me how important names are. And the thing is, and, and our names, our names aren't just, you know, Levi Ballerud. There are many other names that we go by in this world, that are given to us. And I think that's a, a, an important, important thing to remember with names, is often names aren't something that we necessarily earn or start ourselves. They are names that are given to us by our community, by our friends, by our loved ones, sometimes by our enemies. Rarely do we have a name that we have given ourselves. I tried to start a couple nicknames when I was a kid for myself, and none of them, none of them stuck, right? But the short Alaskan who lives down the hall, that one, that one stuck. <laughs> Names are, are, are an interesting thing. And so we go through life with all of these names. Like I said, some of them are given to us out of love. We have the name of, you know, child or friend or husband, or wife, brother, or sister, grandpa, grandma. We have all of these really good names, and sometimes, sometimes those names aren't so good. Weak, loser, unworthy. All of these names that society and the world gives us. And I'm talking about names today because this is 
the day where we hear Christ getting his true name. He is known as Jesus before this. Some people even maybe think of him as Messiah, but this is the very beginning of Mark. We have not heard about Jesus. This is Mark's introduction to Jesus. There is no birth story. There is no Jesus as an 11-year-old going to the, the, getting lost in the temple. No, this is Mark's introduction to Jesus. And he starts out by talking about someone else. He talks about John the Baptist. There's a name, right? It's not just John. It's John the Baptist. That name means something. It tells you a lot about who John is. But then Christ comes and he is baptized and the heavens open up and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and God looks at him and declares and gives him a name, my beloved. And what's amazing about this is God declares Christ his beloved before Christ has even started his ministry. He names him beloved and sends him out into the world. Actually, directly from here to be tempted and challenged. God names him beloved. And though we walk through life with many, many different names, our first name always holds true. And the very first name that we are declared as we are being made <clears throat> in the womb before anyone knows us. Our very first name is named by God and he looks at us and declares us beloved. Each and every one of you carries that name with you throughout your life. You are beloved children of God. And no matter where we go in this world, and no matter what other names we might gather along the way, that name never goes away. You are beloved children of God. So I want to try something here a little bit, because it can be hard, I think, to remember that name. It's much easier to think of ourselves in the names that everyone else gives us whether those are good or bad. And we forget that we are named beloved children of God. I want you to take your hands. All right, this is going to be a little interactive uh, sermon here, all right? Take your hands, okay? I want you to place them on your head, okay? And I want you to repeat after me. I am a beloved child of God. And nothing in this world or the next, will ever change that. Okay, now I want you to turn to someone else. And I want you to really just, just take a moment, okay? Take a moment and look at them. Look at them clearly and strongly. I want you to take your hand and I want you to put a cross on their forehead. Okay? There we go, Don. We'll get you later. And now say these words You are a beloved child of God. And nothing in this world or the next, no matter what other name we gather, will change that fact. You are all beloved children of God. And I wanted to do both of those. I wanted you to take the time to say that to yourself so that you remember it for yourself, but I also wanted you to look at someone else and say it to someone else. Because as you leave today and you enter into this world, back into the world that has all sorts of different names for you, and you see people, some of them friends, some of them not so much friends, some of them maybe even enemies, people you love and people you struggle with, to be, to be in the same room with. I want you to remember that second part. That you looked in their eyes. And that name that God gives us is the name that he gives the entire world. You are my beloved. And nothing that we do 
will change that. And nothing that our neighbors will do will change that fact. Walk into this world seeing each and every person you come across as a beloved child of God. Know that no matter what other name you might have for them and no matter what other name they may have for you, that first name never goes away. Amen.